jury consultant and Supreme Court uh, County mediator, Susan Constantine. Susan Constantine, she's a body language expert and a jury consultant. Susan Constantine, body language expert. Jury consultant, Susan Constantine. Susan Constantine, body language expert. Not only subjectively have I watched them throughout the entire trial, but um, I have picked out about seven jurors that I feel like are more pro-defense based on their body language, what they're noting, what's important to them. What can you tell us about juror number nine? Well, juror number nine is very fastidious, number one, okay? What does He's that mean? Fastidious. He's got his hair combed so perfect. He's got the suit jacket on. And so he likes to dot every I and cross every T. But he's also a loner. He's, a, he's an introvert. If you notice his body language, he never turns towards anyone. He's always by himself. Unless you knew what to look for. He's, he feels very threatened by them. Susan Constantine doesn't read between the lines. Every time he flashes his eyebrows like that, he's constantly trying to convince you. She reads the lines on your face. They can't control their facial muscles. There's so much worry in his forehead. Their body language can betray their words. And so what I'm looking for is little micro expressions that are flashes of concealed emotions that they can't conceal. He's restraining anger. He feels very strong about or it's not his mission. Every time he flashes his eyebrows like that, he's debate, constantly trying to convince you. Well, he doesn't want to make eye contact with him because it's his adversary. I I she wasn't the only one. You can't Just even look at me when I tell you these I things. Got a whole, got a whole <laughs> Susan spotted Meek rubbing his thumbs together. And this is called a soothing gesture to himself. To himself. It's kind of like I'm patting myself. You're doing okay. And what I noticed in the courtroom today is when, um, when the rebuttal with Jeff, uh, with Jeff Ashton, you could actually see deep hatred start to increase and start to, to take over her facial expressions. You saw that her eyelids became more narrowed, um, her, facial, her facial expressions in her mouth became more, uh, came uh, closer together. She was almost pouting. You could see her forehead tense up and her eyebrows pull together. So that is emerging hatred. So she's, over time, developed this right. real dislike for Jeff Ashton. Susan the newest information out was that she had drowned in a pool. There was no sympathy there. Casey knew all along that she lied. You know, one of the things that I find when I'm uh, sharing information about evaluating truthfulness to attorneys and mediators and intelligence is that these are what we call verbal deceptors. And what we do is we really focus in on do the words match the body language? Does it all tie together? Does the facial expressions tell us the true story because 96 how 97 percent of how we communicate is non-verbally then you tie it in with the words and you know what it's a slam dunk for the uh, state to really focus in on her demeanor and her lie you've watched conrad murray listening to himself in court what do you make of it and i'm really glad that you said that jane because just watching body language is not enough you have to tie in the verbal so listening to the tapes, I'm putting the two together. And what I'm hearing here is that he's trying to convince rather than convey. He's always speaking in third person pronouns. So he's wanting to shift the blame to someone else. That number one is a uh, deceptive indicator. Then what we're watching is for his pausing, his hesitations, his stops and starts. These are also indicators of deceptive behavior. Now you tie in the nonverbal. When I'm watching him in the courtroom, he's looking up, he tends to kind of visually kind of recall some of the events, and then he gets into a point of state of mind where he's very saddened, he's remorseful, his face tends to look sunken. So there's something there that he's feeling great sense of remorse for what he has done. Tying it together, he definitely is covering something up. I believe that he is responsible and he's using clever language and shifting blame, which is one of the 12 verbal deceptors of casting blame on someone else, taking emphasis away from himself. I could see the pot boiling because every time he didn't like something, you could see him scratching his head. He was kind of rubbing his finger on the inside of his collar. The heat was starting to pour. And when he didn't like something, he slammed his fist down. So what I'm saying, you can put that all together. You compile all that together, being in the same courtroom, his demeanor, his confession. What I'm seeing here is you see him look down. That's what we call kinesthetic. That's an emotion. All right, when somebody's feeling an emotion, they lean down or put their head down. The thing is, what I'm not seeing is when he says he loves his wife, you should see some sort of sparkle in his eye. You should see some sort of glee or, or happiness of kind of remembering or recalling back. 
but it's that very flat kind of non-expression look. It's very much in control. So that, that again, what we're looking at is they're not really fitting, the pieces aren't fitting together quite well.